Now we're going to talk about how to draw and paint um, heads with the uh, same technique that we used before where you're coloring in uh, the layer below. I'm going to open up this uh, image of the heads and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the image size so that it's 300 pixels per square inch. I'm going to follow all the steps that I did in the previous tutorial where I'm creating additional layers on top of uh, the layer that I'm drawing over. Uh, the one thing is I'm going to change the opacity of that very bottom layer to um, to make it very, very light because it's very hard to trace over something when it's too dark. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating my own character on top of these mannequin heads. So I'm just using the mannequin head for a guide um, so I don't have to worry too much about the sizing and proportions and placement of the features or the shape of the head. I can just focus on creating my character. So I've done all the same steps that I did in the previous video. I've put the uh, color in the in the layer below. I've done the select, deselect, reselect. I've done the select, um, modify, expand so that the color doesn't have that little white gap that's so annoying. I'm picking colors that are darker. Uh, to do the shading. I've changed the fuzziness of the brush um, so that it's, you know, not hard. I'm going to push the slider all the way to the left. So you're really experimenting with what works and doesn't work here. Um, but the most important thing is that all the coloring is done in the layer below and that you, um, you select the layer above deselected and reselected in the layer below so that you can't go outside the lines. I'm going to be playing around with the opacity of the brushes. I'm going to be playing around with using the mixer brush. I'm going to be uh, playing around with using the the blending tool where you the smudge tool um, in order to smear my lines. Now, the other thing that you can do is um, you can also smear the black lines with the smudge tool in the top layer if you want, um, just to get a softer look. But the nice thing is because the top layer is separate from the middle layer, you don't have to worry about um, the color and the black mixing in ways you don't want them to. And I will sh be showing you how to do that um, in a few minutes. So within the next few days, I would like you to download the worksheets. I've got a, a few. One has male heads, another one has female heads in different positions. I want you to pull them up, use them as a template, uh, change the opacity so that they're really um, hard to see, so they're very light, and also change the pixels per square inch to 300 from 72. And then I want you to create your own characters on top of them and practice coloring them using the techniques that we've gone over. In every single one of these characters, I want you to remember to put highlights, midtones, and shadows as you try and create a, a character that's as three-dimensional as possible. Before you submit your final drawing, you're going to hide the bottom layer with the template so that the only thing I'm seeing in the finished product is your work, and then you're going to save it as a JPEG. So I'm just very quickly rushing through this one last head, and then I'm going to show you uh, some things you can do using the smudge tool to distort um, to soften the features in the uh, of the black lines in that top layer. So I'm just uh, starting a new character here. I'm doing all the lines in the top layer. I'm adjusting my brush. So the, there's the lines in the top layer. There's my um, magic wand. I'm going to select inside the head. Oh, the other thing is make sure all your uh, shapes are closed. If they're not, you're going to end up selecting the background. So um, with the hair, 
I made sure that all my lines were closed with the with the skin color. I made sure all my lines were closed. Um, I'm adding my highlights, midtones, and shadows. I'm playing around with opacity. I'm giving the hair some texture. I'm just rushing through this one because my next step is I'm going to be showing you how to do a little bit of um, texturizing by using the smudge tool in the top layer. So I'm now using the smudge tool in the bottom layer to soften the shading. But if you go to the top layer, you can actually, if you make the smudge tool thinner, you can adjust it just the way you adjust any other brush. You can actually um, soften the lines in the top layer you gently using the smudge tool, but just be careful of the direction that you're going in. Um, one of the things that I like to tell students is that when you're using the smudge tool on the face, go in the direction that the face actually goes in as if you're touching a real three-dimensional face. Don't just scribble back and forth, but actually um, stroke along the cheekbone as if you're applying makeup to a real three-dimensional form. Uh, the same with the hair. Don't just scribble scrabble, but blend it as if you're actually touching and smoothing uh, gel into an actual real hair. If you go in the direction that you want the hair to be styled, it'll look a lot more soft and a lot more realistic than if you just scribble scrabble back and forth when you're using the smudge tool. So as you can see, using the smudge tool uh, both in the hair and along the cheeks and around the eyes. As long as I adjust the settings so that the smudge tool is not too broad and I don't just smear the entire piece of artwork, I can um, very much soften the, the features of the face just by uh, using the smudge tool on the top. And the nice thing is because the smudge tool is on the um, using the lines on the top layer, uh, just to soften the lines, it's not mixing with the middle layer uh, where the color is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to this person I um, worked on earlier and I'm going to start adding the smudge tool on her face too in the exact same way. I'll speed up the process with her because you've already seen it on the, on the other um, example. Um, and I do want to just say that if you ever mess any part of it up or you want to refine it, you can always uh, go to the eraser tool and use that to to um, refine the edges. Uh, but you can see when I, um, when I turn off the color layer that what you have is a much softer drawing on the top layer than you had before instead of this very harsh line drawing. So this is Rachel Winneberg, the helpful art teacher with some more advanced tutorials on how to paint in Photoshop.